on this episode of Boxing World Weekly. Lomachenko is back. Sports highest standard and a wild weekend preview. Vasily Lomachenko has lost twice in the span of 18 fights as a professional, and yet he is on a very real path to taking on the undisputed lightweight champion Devin Haney in the near future. On October 29th, Loma has a formidable test in front of him first, with undefeated contender Jermaine Ortiz, who is coming off the biggest win of his career against former super featherweight champion Jamel Herring. Ortiz is naturally bigger than Loma. He is an inch taller, has almost three inches in reach on him, and is eight years younger. This is not going to be a walk in the park for Lomachenko, who hasn't fought in 10 months, whereas Ortiz is five months removed from the Herring fight. He is a very slick counterpuncher who uses his jab to create space, but also to get inside and close in on opportunities to pour on the pressure. Fittingly, he is nicknamed the Technician and has maybe the best technically sound fighter in recent memory that he has to try and pull off the upset against. Haney also has a task in front of him that he has to get through, and that is the rematch with George Kambosos Jr. this Sunday afternoon in Australia. Loma and Haney both want to fight with each other. They both fight under the top ranked banner, so it seems like all they need to do is win their respective fights in front of them. After Loma lost his unified lightweight titles to Tiafima Lopez near the end of 2020, he needed to find a way to get back into title contention. And it had to be dominant, considering fans and boxing media pretty much placed him on the back burner. It should have been expected that the former pound for pound king was going to do just that. He fought Masayoshi Nakatani next, who was taller, longer, and someone who gave Lopez serious problems when they matched up. And it's over. Loma is back. Vintage four. Loma looked like his vintage self, working angles and combinations that would leave a dance instructor speechless, and eventually overwhelming Nakatani, stopping him in nine. Then he moved on to the next former Lopez opponent and former world champion Richard Comey. Again, he dominated the entire fight, where people could have argued the action should have been stopped with how much punishment RC was taking. Instead, it made it to the final bell, and Loma was handed the unanimous decision victory. Now it looks like it's Ortiz and then Haney if the stars align. The former unified super featherweight champ Shakur Stevenson also has plans of moving up to lightweight, and he could be in the mix of future opponents for Lomachenko. Both of these matchups might be the best technical displays of sweet science that can be witnessed today. Three of the best boxers on the planet with an undisputed crown on the line would be fight of the year worthy. One loss usually won't hurt a fighter's career. Two, however, especially in a short span of fights, can be detrimental. But not for Vasily Lomachenko. He not only is on his way to taking on the undisputed champ in Haney, but he might even be favored in that fight. The last time an undisputed champ had multiple losses on their record when earning the titles was before the Four Belt era. If you love the fights, make sure to check out more Boxing World Weekly exclusives on YouTube. Full fights, extended interviews, and everything else a fight fan could want. Up next on Boxing World Weekly, Fighting Father Time, and a Can't Miss Weekend. There's an argument to be made that in boxing, not all champions are held to the same standards. But should they be? On October 4th, 2022, the newly crowned IBF super featherweight champion Joe Cordina was stripped of his world title because he was no longer able to defend it against Shavkat Rakimov on November 5th due to a broken hand. 
This move by the IBF didn't come without public backlash. But according to the agreement that they had with Cordina, they followed the rules and had no choice but to strip him. This is what happened. Kenichi Ogawa was the champ. He wanted a voluntary defense against Cordina, so he paid the mandatory Rakimov to step aside. Cordina then gets a knockout of the year candidate and was supposed to fight Rakimov two months later. That may seem unreasonable, but he didn't receive any damage in the Ogawa fight because the stoppage came in round two. Cordina then asks for a medical extension to fight Rakimov on November 5th. And in the agreement, there were no exceptions. If he didn't fight him on that day, he would be stripped. And unfortunately, because of the hand injury, that is what happened. The reason why there was so much backlash though is because this seems like another example of sanctioning bodies treating some champions differently than others. Some title holders can go months, sometimes years, without having to face a mandatory regardless of exceptions. Errol Spence Jr., who holds three of the four World to Weight World titles, hasn't fought in six months, has no fight date set, and hasn't been ordered any mandatories. This is most likely because the bodies have agreed to relax while he and Terence Crawford try to come to an agreement to make the biggest fight in boxing. Another example is Josh Taylor, who has had to vacate three of his four super lightweight titles because of ordered mandatories, just to continue trying to secure the rematch with Jack Catterall, which is obviously not as big of a fight as Spence versus Crawford. There are plenty more examples we could point to, but that's not the point. This raises the question, should champions be held to different standards in the best interests of the fans? Here are some pros. For starters, it allows big fights the time they need to get made, which keeps the sport in a good light publicly. This allows unified champions to keep their belts longer, so the sport has fewer belts spread around, which also makes for bigger fights, like the Spence example. The cons are champions can be inactive longer, holding up the contenders in the division. If not everyone is held to the same standard, it allows for backlash in certain circumstances. But if they were treated equally, then that could make it harder for bigger fights to happen and make it more difficult to keep unified champions, like the Taylor example. There's a case to be made for all champions to be held to the same set of rules and have definite plans they must follow. But there are also reasons for the opposite to exist, because at the end of the day, boxing is a business, and the more it entertains, the better the sport is. With four sanctioning bodies and fighters technically being independent athletes, this is not likely something that's going to change. But is it even something that people want? That's up to you. There are many greats in boxing who ruled their weight class while in their prime. But what about when they reach the end of that road? In a young person's sport, will they worry too much about their gray hair showing? Is it even worth getting out of bed and facing all the aches and pains? And this week's top five are the top five boxers over 35. Born in Russia, forged in Canada, the current unified light heavyweight champion, Artur Bitterbiev. At 37 years old and in just 18 fights, Bitterbiev has claimed three of the four titles with most recently ending Joe Smith Jr. in less than six minutes. Did I forget to mention this old timer is also the only champion that's knocked out every single opponent? Best not steal his cane or you'll be waking up to the bright lights. Not only is he one championship away from being the first undisputed champ since Roy Jones Jr., but also becoming the first in the four belt era for the light heavyweight division. 54 fights, 41 knockouts, four division titles, and still the tastiest treat out there, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. With no expiration date in sight, Gonzalez has dominated the smaller weight classes, rising to world championship status everywhere he's gone. And to top it all off, Chocolatito became the first Nicaraguan to win titles in four different divisions with his win over Carlos Cuadres. In his last outing, he bested the young knockout artist Julio Cesar Martinez, showing he can not only hang with those young punks, but that this senior citizen is still pretty crafty. At 36 years old, and the only current undisputed champion on this list, the Irish granny herself, Katie Taylor. The 2012 Olympic gold medalist needed less than three years to become the first and only undisputed female lightweight queen, 
as well as a two-division champion and didn't even break her hip in the process. Taylor would go on and defend her undisputed throne six times, including headlining Madison Square Garden against Amanda Serrano for the biggest payday in women's boxing history. Don't be spending all that money on bingo tickets now, Katie. 35, a 2012 Olympic heavyweight gold medalist, former undisputed cruiserweight champ, and current unified heavyweight king, Alexander Usyk. It took Usyk only 15 fights to reach undisputed status before moving up to heavyweight and earning a shot at then unified champ, Anthony Joshua. Because, you know, cutting weight at that age is more exhausting than walking a flight of stairs. Usyk would shock the world, upsetting the biggest star in the division and walked out of the UK as the new unified champion. Though I'm sure it was a gingerly walk. Usyk defeated AJ in the rematch on August 20th, where he proved age is better than beauty once again. Be patient with our number one. You can't move quite as fast with a walker, you know. 40 years old and current unified middleweight champ, Gennady Golovkin. Triple G racked up 37 straight wins with 33 knockouts, collecting the IBF, WBA Super, and WBC middleweight titles before facing his most heated rival in the first installment of their trilogy, Canelo Alvarez, in September 2017. The first two fights ended in a draw and a majority decision for Canelo. Triple G bounced back, regaining the IBF and WBA Super World titles, showing the man ages like fine wine. In the trilogy, Golovkin moved up to 168 to meet Canelo for the undisputed super middleweight crown and unfortunately fell on the wrong side of another close decision. When Triple G does decide to hang them up, he should be sitting poolside at a retirement home for a very well-deserved rest. Every fighter wants to go out on top, but what does that mean? Is that ending their career with a win, being undefeated, being a world champion? Heck, retiring as the undisputed champ? Well, the last one is pretty hard to accomplish. And even though some of the sport's current undisputed champs have pristine records, history shows it is unlikely to stay that way. In this week's Boxing World Weekly Trivia, we want to know, how many fighters completely retired from boxing while being the undisputed champion? The answer, later on. If you love the fights, make sure to check out more Boxing World Weekly exclusives on YouTube. Full fights, extended interviews, and everything else a fight fan could want. After the break on Boxing World Weekly, some big boy banter, and your plans this weekend. Welcome back to Boxing World Weekly. Before the break, we asked, how many fighters completely retired from boxing while being the undisputed champion? The answer, four. Only four fighters left the sport while holding all the belts, including heavyweight greats Gene Tunney and Rocky Marciano, middleweight mauler Carlos Monzon, and one of the best super lightweights of all time, the 115-3-8 Italian hero, Duilo Loy. This Saturday night, we see the return of Deontay Wilder when he takes on Robert Hellenius. Here are the highlights from their virtual press conference. I like being the underdog. It, it, it kind of wakes me up in a better way. Uh, I need to concentrate better, do better for myself. I'm looking forward to our October the 15th at the Barclays Center with uh, Robert Hellenius. I'm ready. Uh, I've been waiting for this fight for a long time, so I've been, I've been preparing. It's going to be an amazing fight, I must say. Although we've been uh, sparring partners for a very long time and we know each other in the ring, but don't make no mistake that uh, when it's time to turn it on, we're both going to be able to turn it on and get the crowd a great a great fight and um, they leave home with, with another memorable moment in time uh, from me and Robert at the Barclays Center. I hope uh, people are going to tune in and, and uh, look at the fight because it's going to be spectacular. 
Training has been hard. It has been fun as well. And uh, it's been interesting, I can say also, you know, just to trap, just the different traveling and locations as you've seen me from Vegas to Alabama, then back to Vegas, then back to Alabama. So it's it been interesting times and exciting times for myself. I'm just ready to go at this point in time. I don't think I'm, I'm without punching power. So for starters, I'm tall. I have a good, uh, good jab and uh, good combinations. As well so uh, more experience i think uh, that will be a key factor well i think that every fight is different and you have to come with different attitudes towards those fights but the main goal is quite the same still so i can't go around thinking that we are good pals when when we're in the fight, fighting ring so that's for another time. I think everybody has a different opinion of, of, of how they feel or, or what may what they have to overcome. But for me, it's just being able to have the long layoffs and then just get back into training because I wear many hats. You know, I just don't. I'm just not a fighter. You know, I, I do so many different things. I run multiples of companies and stuff like that that a lot of people don't know that I do because I don't display it. I don't put it amongst the world you know to to know information about me you know um and and um you know so uh, for me it's just get, getting myself back together getting in shape being able to figure out certain things that makes me happy you know and just like with the training i'm glad that we we're able to switch up locations that was something new for me that i've never done in my career as a professional and um, to change locations, to be able to do different exercises and stuff like that, it made it refreshing for me, you know, to uh, find that love, that passion back into the business. I'm very, very excited. You know, the Barclays Center holds uh, something special uh, to my heart. It's almost like a second home for me. You know, all my uh, uh, most devastating knockouts, all my electrifying knockouts and my most uh, uh, exciting memories have, have been there. You know, and um, it just, it feels good to be able to go back there and then add on to, to more memories and, and uh, October the 15th, uh, looking to uh, uh, gain more knockouts and add to the uh, history of Deontay Wilder at the Barclays Center. If you love the fights, make sure to check out more Boxing World Weekly exclusives on YouTube. Full fights, extended interviews, and everything else a fight fan could want. Up next on Boxing World Weekly, Super Welterweight Supremacy, and a stellar Saturday Showcase. On October 15, 2022, boxing fans will be treated to an entire day's worth of world-class fights. Three massive events, staggered at three different times, two undisputed championships on the line, a heavyweight fight, rivalries to be settled, and much more. This is the one-stop preview for everything you need to know. We will start in chronological order. Kicking the day off on ESPN and Sky Sports at 2 p.m. Eastern is the first all-female card in the UK at the O2 Arena in London. Headlined by a rivalry that began over 10 years ago, Clarissa Shields versus Savannah Marshall for the undisputed middleweight world championship. Shields currently holds three of the 160-pound titles and Marshall has the WBO belt. The latter is the only girl to best shields in a boxing ring when she defeated her in an amateur tournament in 2012. Shields is also the self-proclaimed GWOAT, who is the only fighter in the four belt era to become undisputed in two divisions. She's one of the best boxers in the world, taking on arguably the hardest puncher on the female side of the sport. Some say it should be an even better fight than Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano which is one of the leading candidates for fight of the year in 2022. The co-main is a feud that just started this past year, but has heated up quickly. Michaela Mayer versus Alicia Bumgarner for super featherweight three belt unification. The rest of the slate includes undefeated prospects and Olympians. 
Mayer is considered the best at 130, and Bumgarner became champ by knocking out Terry Harper while she was still standing. After that's finished, you don't even need to flip the channel. On ESPN, the rematch for the undisputed lightweight crown between the champ Devin Haney and the hometown favorite George Cambosis Jr. will take place. Really happening on Sunday afternoon in Australia, but airing in prime time on Saturday in North America. Haney won the first meeting by putting on a boxing clinic and winning by unanimous decision. He needs to win this one if he wants to move on to much bigger money fights in the future. On the undercard are the Maloney brothers, Andrew and Jason, who are both world title contenders. On top of that, there's another world title fight with IBF super bantamweight champion Sharnika Johnson defending her title against Susie Ramadan. Capping things off on Saturday night, on Fox Sports pay-per-view at 9 p.m. Eastern, the return of one of the hardest punchers to ever step in the ring, Deontay Wilder versus Robert Hellanius. The Bronze Bomber is coming off the historic trilogy against Tyson Fury and looks to get back to the world title spotlight by flipping the switch off on the Nordic Nightmare. The co-feature is two former super middleweight champions, Kayla Plant and Anthony Jarrell, fighting for a shot at the current undisputed king, Canelo Alvarez. Plant's only loss in his most recent fight was against Canelo, but the king hasn't looked like his dominant self in his last two fights and maybe Plant will find a way to not only beat the man in front of him, but upset Canelo in the rematch if they can get the fight made. October 15th is a day North American combat sports fans should book off, because once you wake up Saturday morning, have your breakfast, run some errands, and knock off some chores, it'll be world-class boxing all day long. Here are this week's top five super welterweights. Liam Smith, Tim Zhu, Sebastian Fundora, Brian Castaño, Jermel Charlo. Our fighter of the week is WBC interim world champion, Sebastian Fundora. The towering inferno kept his unbeaten streak alive by dominating Carlos Ocampo to a unanimous decision victory on October 8th. It'll be hard to deny Fundora a shot at the full title in the near future. And that's it for another round of Boxing World Weekly. Until next time, enjoy the fights.